Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, May 24th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I noticed some interesting scans in our honeypots and really don't quite have a great idea of what they're after other than it looks like they're going after Apache NiFi. Now Apache NiFi is not an application that's necessarily sort of a household name but it is quite popular. It's one of those big Java applications and the main purpose of it is to route data. So let's say you have a JSON file but you need to insert that into a MongoDB database, well, uh, that's what NiFi can do for you. It can sort of transform data from one format to another, interact with different file and database types like this. It's quite popular in the sort of machine learning space where often you have these large data sets that you sort of have to reshape in order to use it for your machine learning. All I see at this point is that over the last couple of days, we had one IP address in particular that appears to scan for NiFi servers. There are a couple other IP addresses that hit the same URL slash NiFi, but with different user agents, almost looks to me a little bit like they may be sort of following up on the initial scans. If the first scan finds something, maybe these other uh, scans are then trying to sort of confirm that NiFi is running. Best I can think of is that they may be looking for unprotected NiFi instances. It could certainly uh, be an issue. If you have any insight, uh, let me know. Uh, there was one comment so far noting that they also are seeing some of these scans against the port 8080 in particular. I didn't see any sort of noteworthy vulnerabilities in NiFi recently that could prompt something like this. So if you use NiFi, it would also be interesting to know what kind of abuse scenarios you could think of against the application. Then we got a number of vulnerabilities and patches to talk about. First of all, Samsung released their monthly update for their Android devices. One vulnerability in particular here caused some interest that CVE 2023-21492. CVSS score is only 4.4, so it's not a high risk vulnerability, but it's already being exploited in the wild. It's one of those typical enabling vulnerabilities that I usually call them. It does allow the bypass of address space layout randomization or ASLR. So one of those information leakage vulnerabilities that uh, leaks information about the address space layout and with that other vulnerabilities, like for example, buffer overflows may be exploited. Something you probably should update and of course it does include all the various updates from Google that we got for Android this month. And then we sadly also have an update to talk about that didn't go so well and apparently it does affect the Lenovo Think Center all-in-one computers. The latest Windows update of all things is apparently rendering some of the systems uh, unusable. They will no longer boot. There is only some uh, sort of diagnostic uh, tones that will be audible after you apply the update. No fix yet from Lenovo or from Microsoft for that matter about this particular issue, but in particular on the Lenovo support site, you'll find a number of reports about this. Apparently the problem here is a Lenovo firmware update that's sort of included in the Windows update. Reports about this particular issue are going back to late April, so almost a month now. And we also got updates from Dell. Uh, this affects the Dell VX Rail product. Uh, it does fix one vulnerability that does allow arbitrary command execution. However, an attacker would have to be logged in already as a privileged uh, user. 
And two researchers from Tencent and also from Chaoyang University uh, did come up with an interesting uh, brute force method to uh, bypass uh, fingerprint sensors. The problem they're solving here is that if you're trying to brute force fingerprints, you are usually locked out after a couple of attempts. But due to a vulnerability in some of these fingerprint sensors, it's actually possible to essentially make some of these attempts not count or reset the counter that's keeping track of how many attempts a particular user has uh, failed. They tested a number of different devices. All the Android devices they tested uh, were vulnerable uh, to these particular attacks. However, Apple iPhones, they only uh, tested an iPhone SE and an iPhone 7. So with older models, apparently were not vulnerable. While the hardware effort is not all that uh, excessive for this particular attack, it's still probably an attack that would be more applicable to something like a law enforcement scenario or such, where an attacker has uh, ample time with the cell phone in order to conduct the attack. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.